Thanks so much for joining us this weekend. We're especially glad you're joining us. It's your first church experience, a long time or first time ever. And if you're new or relatively new, we have a gift to thank you for being with us today. Simply text the word WELCOME to 88877 and we'll send you that gift. Well, we are in the second week of a series we are calling Rebel with a Cause. And we're looking at the towering figure of John the Baptist. And last week we said there's so much we could learn from, the, from John the Baptist and so many different lessons. But what we're looking at through the course of this series is what he has to teach us about purpose and being clear and living out a life of purpose and meaning. One of the deepest desires of our heart is for a desire to know our purpose, to know why we are here. We talked about some of the benefits last week of knowing our purpose. When we know our purpose, our decisions are simpler. If it serves our purpose, it's a yes. If it doesn't, then it's a no. We have so much greater resilience when we know our purpose, to overcome trials and tribulations. When we know our purpose, we can have joy, even in the midst of difficult times. And then when we have a sense of purpose, we have a sense of significance. We know we are part of something bigger, so we don't get drawn into petty little fights. And so last week we looked at uh, our purpose, and we looked at how the angel announced John's birth. And even before John was conceived, God had a plan and a purpose in mind for John. And so just like John, and, and John was created to be great in the sight of the Lord. And maybe an angel didn't announce your birth, but what I can tell you is that God had something in mind. You have been in God's mind since the beginning of time. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so we said step one to understanding God's, you know, understanding our purpose and our plan is to seek God and ask him why he created us. So today we're going to move on to step two by looking at the birth of John the Baptist. And we're going we're to look at the second step we can implement into our lives. And there's actually two aspects to this step. And I have to admit to you up front, the second part of this aspect I'm not very good at. Uh, in preacher world, they say, speak to your weaknesses and you'll never run out of things to say. Okay? Speak to your weaknesses and you'll never run out of things to say. That is definitely true for me on one of the points I'm going to make to you today. All right, so let's dive in to the birth of John the Baptist. Here's what happened. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. <clears throat> so it comes time for the birth of John, and everybody rejoices with Elizabeth. She's had a baby. Again, remember, she was thought to be barren, thought she could never have a child. So great rejoicing that she has this baby. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, <coughs> they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, no, he will be called John. So in that culture at that time, the Jewish people, as still in this day, would circumcise their sons on the eighth day. And that goes all the way back to the time of Abraham. So long-standing tradition. They were going to, at the time of circumcising the son, you would name the child. And usually it was, the father, it was the father's responsibility to name the child. But remember, Zechariah, he cannot speak. He's mute. And so uh, the neighbors and the relatives say, okay, I guess we'll take over. We're going to name him Zechariah. And it's a little bit of a reminder to us that there can be voices in our life, you know, that work against God's plan. God wanted this child named John. But these voices even well-intentioned voices, can work against God's plan. Luckily, blessedly, Elizabeth speaks up and she says, no. God wants him called John. He will be called John. And last week we said, again, Jeho John means Jehovah's gracious gift. And there's so many layers of meaning to his name. Um, first of all, God, uh, John was Jehovah's gracious gift or God's gracious gift to Elizabeth and Zechariah but he's also gonna be God's gracious gift to the world because he's gonna usher in the age of grace uh, by pointing to the person of Jesus Christ. Now the relatives pushed back. They answered her, there is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. So the relatives, they pushed back. In that time, in that culture, uh, as in many cultures today, 
<clears throat> you named a child based on the father's name or a relative's name. That was the convention. But now Elizabeth is breaking with convention. John is breaking with convention with this new name. That suits John as well because we see throughout his life he works against convention. He, he stands outside the temple um, and points to God. He's out in the middle of nowhere. He stands outside the religious system. He goes against the status quo. So here again we see depth and meaning to his name. So the relatives say to Zechariah, what do you want to name the child? We're told. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is, is his name. And all were amazed, and immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue free, and he spoke, blessing God. So after nine months, over nine months, of not being able to speak, Zachariah's tongue is loosened. He's able to speak again when he agrees with God, and more importantly, when he agrees with his wife. All right? (laughs) Which one was more important? Not sure. I kind of tend to find that uh, when I agree with my wife, I am agreeing with God. I don't know. Others can relate. So anyway, he agrees with what God wants to call a child. He's able to speak now. And this amazes people. Then fear came upon all their neighbors. And all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All these things took, all, all who heard these things took them to heart saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. So when people heard the story of how Zachariah and Elizabeth, after all these years, being thought to be barren or having a child, and then how Zachariah was mute, and then how he's able to speak once he names a child John, and everyone's like, all right, something's going on here. And they ask this question, what will this child be? And for the, you know, isn't that a question asked of every child that's born? For those of you who are parents, maybe you can think back to maybe the delivery room or pretty shortly after your son or daughter was born and looking into their eyes and they're probably sleeping and quiet and you just said, what will he be? What will she be? What will, what will, what will he be like in his personality? What gifts and skills and abilities will she have? What impact will he have on this world? It's a question asked about every child. What will he be? What will she be? So then, Zachariah speaks up to answer the question that everybody is answering. But before he answers that question, he does something else. He he praises God. He says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and brought redemption to his people. Before he answers the question, he praises God. And he praises God for being a God of redemption. God is a God of redemption. That means God takes the bad situations and he turns them for good. That God's able to bring good out of any bad situation. He redeems our situations. He redeems our life. For Zechariah, he had redeemed him because he was in a bad situation, unable to have a child, and now he's given him a son. And not just any son, but a son who's going to play an incredible part in God's plan. He praises God. (coughs) I'm learning that this is so important to be part of our lives, to praise God. I'm learning it very slowly, but it's important we praise God in the good times, that we praise God when we have a child that we praise God when we get a promotion. We praise God when things are good because as we praise God in the good times, it solidifies those good things in our hearts. It helps us grow in gratitude. And we praise God in the bad times because even when our circumstances are bad, God is still good. And our praising God in the bad times, it has the power to shift the atmosphere and turn that situation around because God is a God of redemption. So before Zechariah answers the question of who's, who his son John is, he praises God, and now he goes on to say, okay, this is who John will be. He says, and you, my child, will be called a prophet, the prophet of the Most High, for you'll go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Jesus is called son of the Most High, 
John is prophet of the Most High. And you'll go before the Lord to prepare his ways. So what is John doing here? He's agreeing with what the angel said. He's agreeing with God's plan for his son's life. He's saying, you will be a prophet. If you remember last week, the angel said to prepare a people fit for the Lord. You're going to be a prophet who prepares the way of the Lord. (coughs) John continues. He goes on blessing his son, agreeing with God. You're going to be a prophet to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the dawn, the daybreak from on high will break upon us. He says, you, my son, will give people knowledge that they can be saved from their sins, their faults, their failures. That God is a forgiving God. That God is tender and merciful. You're going to tell people this. He says, you're going to, for those who sh- shine, you're going to shine on those who sit in darkness and death's shadow to guide their feet into the path of peace. John, you're going to help people who are sitting in darkness see the light and see there's a way forward by pointing to the Messiah. So all these things, John or Zechariah speaks over John at just eight days old, blessing him. And look what the next verse says. The child grew and became strong in spirit. Those are related. He spoke blessing over his son, and the child grew and became strong in spirit. He became a person, a man of conviction and courage, boldness, and audacious faith. And while the Gospel of Luke, or none of the other Gospels tell us this, I think it's safe to say that this wasn't the first time Zechariah blessed his son. That probably growing up, Zechariah told John the story of the angel announcing his birth and the great plans God had for him. And he probably told that story over and over again. And every time he told that story and told John that God had a great plan for him, he grew strong in spirit. We're going to pick up the story of John the Baptist there next week to see how strong in spirit he became. But as I said, each week we want to take a look at the application for what it has for us about living a life of purpose. And like last week, it might seem on the surface there's nothing we really can do. Because maybe you did have a parent and a father or parents like, like Zachariah who spoke blessing into your life and told you God had a great plan for you and called out the good things and the gifts you had and the gifts of personality and skills and abilities and they, they called that out of you and blessed you. Or maybe you didn't. It's, it's difficult for you to remember an encouraging word, an inspiring word, a word of blessing from your family or your parents. And maybe most of us are probably somewhere in between, but you're sort of like, okay, it is what it is. What what control do I have over that? But here's what I would guess for every single one of us. Someone in your life has blessed you. Probably someone in authority has blessed you. And what I would say to you is the people that have blessed you and have called out the good in you and called out the abilities you've had and called out your giftedness are the ones that are agreeing with God's plan for your life. And maybe someone comes to your mind right now and you can see their face. You hear what they said to you. Now, I I can think of a lot of people who have blessed me. Uh, The person that comes to my mind is Father Michael. I came to the church uh, many years ago as as a young, you know, young I was 24 years old when I came to work at Nativity, and I didn't know what I was doing. But Father Michael blessed me. He didn't bless me with words like, you can do it, or I see all these giftedness, and that wasn't really his personality. That's not his style. He blessed me, though, by giving me responsibility, by giving me opportunity to lead things, by putting my name in the bulletin next to his name on the bulletin back when we had a bulletin. You know, he, he gave me a microphone, and to me that was a way of saying blessing. I believe in you. Right? Who's the people who have blessed you? Because here's the reality. We live in a world of blessing and curse, right? We live in a world in which people speak blessing into our lives and encourage us, but we also live in a world of criticism. And of course, not everybody that gives you feedback is criticizing you. Some people are trying to help you, but we definitely live in a world of both. You know, they say in management, 
you know, to, for every one kind of critical feedback you give, to give five different words of encouragement, you know, balance it out that way because that's what people need. And I think that's good advice, but I also think that's the ideal and not the real. It's a very, that's a huge challenge. We're going to get criticized and we're going to get blessed. The question is, whose voice do we listen to? Because I believe it's the voice of blessing. Those who call out goodness in us, call out our gifting, who are agreeing with God's plan. So first, when it comes to last week, we talked about first step in understanding our purpose. Seek God and ask him. We can keep doing that. <clears throat> but second, we listen to the words of blessing. We let those words fuel us. And as I said, there's kind of a second aspect to this. We listen to the words of blessing and we speak blessing over others. Especially those of us who are a little bit further along in life. We have this responsibility to speak blessing to people who are younger than us and in our charge. Now, I told you earlier that you know, I speak to my weaknesses, never run out of things to say. This is not a strength for me. I am not a natural encourager. And the people I work with and people in my family are shaking their heads. Yep, he's right. He's not making that up. And you guys can stop shaking your heads so vigorously. I get, I get it. Um, let me tell you how bad I am at this. So my son Nate is 17. He'll be uh, 18 this fall. And over the last couple of years, he's been bulking up, putting on muscle mass and being really disciplined and hitting the gym. And he recently wrote an essay saying that it was some of my words that motivated him. So you might be thinking... Sounds so far so good, right? You motivated your son. Well, here's what I said to him. I looked at a picture of him playing football two years ago, playing linebacker. I said, look at that thin, skinny-armed linebacker. Pray for my kids, I know. Um, <laughs> now, in my defense, in my defense, two things. One, that's kind of the relationship I have with Nate. We, we burn each other. We, we kid each other. Um, and, and second, I then texted him this week. I said, hey, I'm really proud of you for being so resilient and taking my words, and it motivated you. And he said, thanks. So that was good. So anyway, but I understand I have to grow in this. So as a fellow struggler, and some of you are great at this. You don't even need me to say it. But if you're a fellow struggler like me, I took a couple of things away from the passage from the Gospel of Luke we just read. I learned a few things. There was a couple of things from Zechariah I've been implementing this week. Number one is to praise God for my, ki for my kids or everybody under my authority. Right? You can do that too. Praise God for the people, your children. You can praise God for the people you're managing or the kids in your classroom or um, the people in your organization if you're, you're a business owner. We can start by praising God for them. And then second, like Zechariah, I've been praying this week that I agree with God's plan for their lives, that through my words and my actions, I would be agreeing with God. So this week I've just been praying, God, I want to agree with your plan for my kids. God, thank you. And, you know, I praise you, God, for Max, Gus, Nate, Elsa, Kepha, Caleb, Lydia, Nadia. I, God, I praise you for them. Through my words and my actions, may I agree with your purpose and plan for your life. That's how I've been working on trying to bless my kids. So here's what I encourage you for this week. Tomorrow morning or maybe even tonight before you go to bed. Maybe when you have your cup, cup of coffee tomorrow morning. At some point, though, in the next, you know, 24 hours, give yourself a moment to thank God for the people who have blessed you. One person, maybe. And think what they came to mind that spoke to your heart, because that's probably a good indication of God's purpose and plan for your life. And then maybe who's one person or group of people God wants you to speak blessing into their lives so they can know the purpose and plan God has for them. Begin just by praising them. Name, you know, thank God, praising God by naming them. And say, God, may through my words and my actions, may I lead them to your purpose, your plan for their life. And I think if we do that, it will naturally follow. Our words and actions will naturally follow. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, Thank you for this example of Zechariah who spoke blessing over John 
and the John went on to have an incredible impact because of that blessing. God, we thank you for those voices that have agreed with you and the purpose and plan you have for our life. Help call them to mind. And God, may we be a voice of blessing in the people that you've put in our charge. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for watching. Be sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples by sharing this video. We're grateful that you're part of this community.